Hello and welcome to today's video. Uh, this video is part of the entrepreneurship and e-commerce set of videos that we were doing. So it's probably video three in video three of 15. Um, and we are doing feasibility analysis today. And uh, we'll go through that in detail or uh, some detail. <laughs> Uh, just a quick some of the learning outcomes but don't worry about it really we're going to cover feasibility analysis and uh, the four areas of feasibility we can see here uh, that we're going to concentrate we this will of course be in our uh, assessment and um, business plan at the end of the year we're going to include a business uh, a feasibility analysis um, so the last day we the last video sorry and uh, in the last class indeed as well we looked at um how to generate ideas how, how to come up with good ideas and um in in that we explored trends and how tr looking at trends can help us or help entrepreneurs lead to good ideas we looked at political economic social technological trends things that are happening in these areas that are currently trending and is there an opportunity because of these trends to look at developing businesses uh, we also looked at uh, for coming up with good ideas we also looked at problem solving if you can solve a problem uh, that's a good good uh, way of, of starting a business and um, indeed with my own business I guess the, the problem solving that I was doing I had a, a small digital marketing company and and the, the problem that we were solving is during a time of recession a lot of small to medium sized businesses could not afford to hire full time staff to do marketing and digital marketing so uh, the problem that we solved for businesses is that we um offered them the equivalent digital marketing services at you know almost a half the price of employing someone full time so um it was solving a problem for for businesses that they could still offer digital marketing and advertising uh but uh, uh they obviously the cost wasn't as much and the last thing that we looked at was um the last thing sorry was oh a gap in the market finding gaps in the market and, and sort of some of the examples that we looked at are current gaps in the market where maybe uh you know the food industry is there a fast food but yet healthy option does that exist um is that a good idea how, how could we do that is there a business in that uh, i think other things we looked at were 24 hour fitness stores or gyms uh, i think they do exist now so maybe that gap is gone and um, toys that are both fun and educational could be a, a gap in the market but anyway they were just some examples that we looked at in the last video which was how to come up with good ideas and today that is very closely linked to feasibility analysis because uh you know okay we've come up with what we think or what we believe to be a good idea it could be a new mobile application it could be an idea for a restaurant i've often played around with the idea of opening up an arabic restaurant in ireland because i think there's a, an opening in the market a gap in the market for middle eastern food um you know but <laughs> it's a good idea perhaps but how, how do we know or how do we test the idea and in some ways that really is what feasibility analysis is and um, what we do is we go okay well we've got this idea and before we start writing a business plan you know before we start investing a lot of money and resources into this idea well we need to explore if it's if it's really worth pursuing the idea so um feasibility analysis feasibility analysis sorry uh, is the process of determining if a business idea is viable so if the idea is good and worth pursuing uh, and that's what feasibility analysis is uh, so we uh, determine uh, the preliminary it is the preliminary or first evaluation of a business idea so we look we evaluate our idea and it's conducted for the purposes of determining whether the idea is worth pursuing and just the next 
what we have here, I guess, is uh, business development process. Well, first, as we said, we sort of have or recognize that we have an idea, and then we test the feasibility, then we write the business plan, and then we launch the business. Although this model is somewhat changed now, I think you could nearly put writing the business plan and launching the business uh, well with a lot of technological technology companies uh, they launch the business and write the business plan at the same time they're almost a, a living entity that is the more lean startup type of entrepreneurship that we call which is a, a type of model that has evolved from Stanford based on the uh, Silicon Valley tech startup companies use use a lot where you know rather than writing a business plan they have to go out and ask customers about the new technologies but what we can say is the, the feasibility analysis happens before either of these things happen. So we have the idea first and then we test our idea, if you like. Uh, and again, the proper time to conduct. So let's just say the same thing again. <laughs> uh, so won't waste any more time on that. Uh, what you will find, so we, you know, we're obviously we're going to analyze the idea and what you will find yourself if you Google uh, feasibility analysis you will you will find a number of different areas to that that can that can be analyzed we tend to focus on four key areas um, and this is what you will be asked to focus on for your assessment as well but we focus on product or service feasibility and this uh, product and service feasibility sorry industry and target market feasibility organizational feasibility and financial feasibility so i guess the, these um these are the four main ones and we'll go into these in somewhat detail over the next 10 15 minutes and and what i'd like to do is just give you a good understanding of those four areas um and and hopefully you already have a good understanding of what feasibility analysis already is um so here we go we can see here we have a proposed business venture uh, so we have our idea proposed business idea if you like and we're spending the time and resources necessary to move forward with the business idea but it depends on this if we can say yes to all of these four areas then we proceed with the business plan if we say no in one or more of these areas well, then we have to drop or rethink the idea. And what that basically means is, you know, if and we look at each of these individually, but if we can say, OK, well, look, this is not financially feasible, e.g., for example, we do not have enough money to go ahead with this idea and we have no way of getting that money. Well, then there really is no point in pursuing the business, because if you have no money uh, or if it is not financially feasible, then we do not go ahead with the business. And apologies, my phone is ringing in the background. <laughs> um, so we, let's look at each of these uh, individually. And uh, we probably maybe readdress this diagram at the end. Um, we look at different examples as well as we go through these. I will use some examples of my own business. And of course, some examples uh, just off the top of my head are uh, Okay, so product service feasibility, um, and we've already discussed in other areas of this course what product and service and the differences are, but products tend to be um, tangible and services intangible. Um, product is, for example, um, a phone and a service might be a doctor's appointment or hairdresser's appointment. Um, but we look at them together because, you know, if we're offering a new business, it might be a product or a service that we're offering. Of course, this is a mainly focused on web media, so it's likely that we're creating a mobile application or, or digital marketing offering of some sort or another. Uh, so they can be both products and services. Uh, but it is an assessment of the overall appeal of the product or service being proposed. So what, what we're doing here is we're basically assessing, is this product uh, or assess uh, service, what sort of appeal does it have to customers, to people? Um, and before a prospective company rushes out uh, a new product or service into development, it should be sure that the product or service is what customers want. And um, that's really what we're asking here is, is, you know, is this something that customers want? Is it something that they need? And we can see here desirability and, and demand. Um, 
you know, being the, the sort of keywords that we're we're looking for is is this something that will be desirable? Is this something that will be in demand? And uh, you know, if we go back up here uh, before we rush out and, and develop a new product, I remember uh, we were, we were once doing. Um, my, uh, I was mentoring a young startup, and she was developing a smart mirror that was uh, based around uh, getting helping people get ready and. Um, sort of, it would have had makeup videos playing for, and it was able to, the technology was able to um, uh, look at skin tones, and uh, if you were if if you were greasy skin today, and different things like that there, um, and then it would advise them what was the best make makeup for that day, or indeed you could say you were going to a work meeting, and it would it would offer the work. Um, but I I, rem I remember we were sort of our target customer was perhaps um, more orientated at business people at first, and we were we'd we'd done a focus group where we got. Uh, Bus business women in to um, look at our prototype and in the original prototype I was like yeah maybe it'd be good to have our emails there uh, at the bottom of the screen of the mirror and you know as, as they're getting ready they can even start work early in the day and uh, um, but this is something our customers didn't want at all and uh, they shot that idea down straight away they said you know when we're putting on makeup it's it's me time and we want to just focus on on me time and uh, you know, so it was something that I thought was a good idea, but and if I had have rushed that product out uh, with a feature where along the bottom we had news and emails coming in and social media coming in, uh, yet our customers said no, that is not what they would want on a smart mirror. They would just like a um, uh, the tutorials, the video tutorials and recommendations and help them get ready for the day. So before we rush out, we have to ask our customers: Is this something they would want? Uh, and we'll, we'll look at a few other questions to ask in a second, but some tools that are used to test feasibility, obviously feedback, customer feedback, and, and that's um, important uh, because really customers are going to tell you what they want in the product. You might think you know what you want, but realistically um, customers are, are the ones that will you know, give you good intricate detail of, of what they want. Um, and in saying that, of course, I always remember uh, Henry Ford, who said that if he listened to what his customers wanted, uh, he would have built faster horses. So maybe the customers aren't always right, but uh, I think today, you know, it's very important to get the feedback from from our potential customers. Surveys are a good way of also doing this question and answers uh, for us web media students um, uh, and uh, uh, we would probably focus on Sorry, I had an email came in on my other screen here. <laughs> uh, for us, we would focus on website usability testing and maybe A B testing, which is, you know, comparing maybe one home page versus the other and, and getting customer feedback on that. But let's look at a few more questions that we would ask about the product or service when we're doing feasibility. And these are the questions that we would ask of our customers and of ourselves, of course, is, you know, does this product or service make sense? Is it reasonable? Is it something consumers and customers would get excited about? Um, and again, with myself, with my own business, you know, when I was starting out with the, with a digital marketing company, that's the questions I had to ask. You know, were were the prices reasonable? Um, is it something that I thought customers would get excited about? And my customers at the time were mainly hospitality customers, and and probably the, something they would get excited about because they wanted to get involved in social media and digital marketing, but they did not have the skill sets, nor could they afford to hire uh, full-time employees. So they were getting offered a service that, that could help their business and promote their business without having to invest too heavily. Um, do, so we asked the question again, I suppose, when we're coming up the idea, does it, does it uh, take advantage of a trend, solve a problem, or take advantage of gaps in the marketplace? And uh, hopefully we've asked these questions when we were coming up with the idea, and we can say, yes, this does. Is it a good time to introduce the product or service to the market? And, um, you know, that's just something that the question you have to ask uh, um, is this a good time to introduce the product or service to the market and when is a bad time to introduce it to the market um, and it's just something that you you need to think about and there then of course finally is there any fatal flaws in the, the design or, or concept of the product and I suppose one of the potential fatal flaws I'd 
been introduced and when I was recommended the smart mirror was of course that emails down the side whereas the majority of our customers didn't want that but um, so basically this is a product service and uh, uh, we'll discuss this more in our class that goes over this video but uh, um, it gives you a good idea of you know what product service feasibility is customers uh, is it something they want is it desirable will it be in demand um, and uh, you know does it take advantage of, of a trend etc so once we've answered yes to this question then you know we can move on to to uh, the next stage of feasibility analysis and again if we if we answer no to this stage you know if it if it doesn't make sense if it's not reasonable if customers aren't going to get excited about it it doesn't solve a problem then you know there, we we need to rethink our product or service uh, when I have something down here concept statement should be developed here okay next class I'm not talking about that uh, industry target market feasibility so uh, what we're basically looking at first industry uh, for you that are uh, not familiar industry and target market feasibility is an assessment of the overall appeal of the industry and the overall appeal of the target market for the proposed business so we'll just look at what both of those things are now uh, an industry is a group of firms or a group of companies that produce a similar product or service so the airline industry of course offer flights and uh, the the soft drink industry offers of course fizzy drinks and uh, um, the taxi industry they offer uh, paid lifts so that's just what an industry is it's a group of companies that produce the same product or service and then of course uh, a company's target market is the portion of that industry that it plans to go after so if we look at the industry um, if we look at the airline industry for example uh, we can say that um, Ryanair in the airline industry their target market is if you like the uh, cheap airlines cheap airfares and and perhaps not as good services uh, not as much luxury whereas you might say Emirates is is more a luxury based airline service and they're going to go after the luxury market um, and we we of course will explain that in a lot more detail in the marketing section of entrepreneurship we're going to do a video in about three weeks on uh, on marketing but what we can say for now is a firm or company's target market is the limited portion of the industry that it plans to go after so it's not going after the whole industry it doesn't expect you to, to get customers from the whole industry it's not going, but it's going to focus on a specific part of the industry so uh, and the examples we've used are uh, airline industry where Ryanair or even perhaps Dubai Airway Airlines are or here in the Middle East, even um, uh, Dubai Air, I think, would be perhaps a more cheaper option compared to Etihad or, or Emirates. So we can say that Dubai Air are going after the, the cheaper option. And uh, uh, if you look at the soft drinks industry, you can say that Lucozade is perhaps going after the sports industry. Um, Red Bull, maybe the sports industry as well. It's sort of extreme sports industry even. And then you, may, you might are, are part of the... Uh, you, so you can say that soft drinks industry you have different people different drinks within that industry targeting different people uh, just a few things to look at in terms of industry target market feasibility and um, are some of the questions that that I guess we ask is uh, firstly industry attractiveness and um, is this a young rather than an old industry and I guess I suppose examples of young industry um, versus an old industry where we can say that you know some examples of young industry might be uh, online dating that would be um, a young industry it's only about 10 years old I suppose maybe something like that there uh, companies setting up online uh, dating in the last 10 years as opposed to the steel or agricultural industry which we would consider to be old industries or the manufacturing industry um, we could consider it being a uh, an older industry um, other examples of maybe a young industry at the minute would be um, wearable wearable technology I guess is a young industry that's sort of something that is uh, at the moment if you like is you know it's it's very early in in the 
in the life cycle uh, of the industry. It's only a new sort of uh, emerging business um, that's going, you know, we can see huge potential and possibility for wearable technologies. But at the minute, basically, all we've got are our smartwatches and, and, you know, a few things like that there. Whereas, you know, where that can go as technology develops is potentially huge. Um, so we say that, you know, as an entrepreneur, a young industry is perhaps better than an old industry unless of course you're introducing a uh, new technology or something to that old industry so for example you could say that maybe the taxi industry was old an old industry but uber came along and they introduced new technology um to that industry given it i suppose reinvigorating in it and bring it back to a youthful industry where where they use technology to to uh, disrupt and and reinvent the industry um so early rather than late in the life cycle and again what that sort of means is so a life cycle of a product or an industry is usually four stages you have your introduction stage you have your growth stage where the product or industry grows uh, dramatically and then you have a period of maturity uh, and then of course decline and we could say that decline is late in the life cycle and uh, uh, you're trying to think of an industry that uh, has declined significantly. Um, well, I suppose the DVD industry is <laughs> probably dead. Uh, maybe I've still seen the odd couple of shops, but uh, I, I wouldn't imagine young entrepreneurs are looking at developing the DVD industry. If anything, people are getting out of that industry. Um, perhaps you might say that satellite uh TV is, uh, you couldn't say it's a growth industry anymore. I think you might say that it's more in a mature stage um, as a lot of uh, TV is now moving towards online technology, delivering online TV, the Netflixes and Amazon Primes and, and uh, that. And what does that mean for um, the likes of BN Sports or Sky TV? Uh, are they are they in decline again if I was an entrepreneur would I be looking at developing a satellite based TV channel or would I be looking at, at developing an online TV channel and um, these of course are things that that you look at when you're doing the feasibility analysis uh, a fragmented rather than concentrated industry so again what we would ask here is is the industry fragmented rather than concentrated and the difference in th those two basically is a fragmented industry is an industry that is not dominated by one or two companies and um, rather there are lots of of companies uh, within the industry uh, so for example the restaurant industry you could say it's fragmented there are no real dominating um, uh, businesses in 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 the restaurant industry although there are of course mcdonald's and and that and, and fast food um but it's still an industry that you can uh, and you that you could start tomorrow fast food you could open up a fast food restaurant tomorrow and, and be very successful uh the concentrated industries tend to be industries that uh are dominated by two or three key um key companies and it's very difficult to break into that industry so for example we might say that a concentrated industry would well if we look at oh if we look at the search engine <laughs> search, sorry coming up with these ideas the search engine um industry but you can say it's dominated by google and of course we, we might have one or two others the yahoo and and Thing, but realistically it's dominated by one or two other companies and and to break that industry would be very difficult uh, the nappy industry is probably dominated by a couple of companies pampers and and uh, a few others um, and uh, so that's just the difference between a fragmented and a concentrated industry so again if we're looking at industry analysis for feasibility we look is it young is it early and is it fragmented and we just have a good understanding of these things before we pursue our idea we of course have to um look at the target market attractiveness and again if we look back here we find that oh the target market is the uh, portion of the industry that we're going to go after uh, so who are our customers and um you know have we a good idea of our customers and 
we will go into target marketing in more detail in in uh, uh, the marketing section as i said already uh, we'll we'll go into the industry in a lot more detail in in quarters five force analysis but that's five or six weeks away um but uh, for the feasibility analysis we really have to have an idea okay who are our customers can we draw a picture of, of our customers in our mind can we clearly draw a picture of of are they young are they old what is their income so we look at the different demographics where do they live um uh, uh, what are their habits and, and things like that there uh, of course a small market uh, equals less competitors a big market equals more competitors so after you're sort of happy that you've analyzed the industry you know do does, does my target market exist? Is this industry attractive to go into? And if you're happy with those, um, well then now you're happy with product service and industry target. Then you move on to the organizational feasibility. And I'm possibly spending too long on all of this, so <laughs> try and speed it up a little bit. Uh, organizational feasibility quite simply is, uh, you know, you're, you're going to set up a business. Does this business, have sufficient management expertise does it have su sufficient resources does it have the management expertise and does it have sufficient resources so from a management expertise we just say you know is the te team that that is going to start up this business capable of carrying out the required duties of the business so you know you have a good idea but do you have the people to uh, carry out the idea and you know again an example of that might be is web media student you might come up with a great idea for a mobile application but do you have the uh, uh, software engineers to develop the the mobile application do you have the marketing expertise to to market the, the product so you know you're going to have to ask yourself do you have the people do you have access to this and if not well can you really go ahead with creating a mobile application if you don't know how to program mobile applications etc so you know it's great coming up with the idea but do you have the the expertise and capabilities and you know if you if you answer the question no to that then you know maybe the next before you go ahead with the businesses you have to find someone that's going to help you uh uh, give you the expertise that you need you know whether that's a, a developer that wants to come in on the business with you or or you have the finances to employ a software engineer for example and then of course do you have the resources to start off the business so uh, for example when I started off my digital marketing company it started off in my bedroom I didn't need a um, <laughs> an office at the start I was cold calling clients and a hotels and that and offering them my services of a digital marketing the resources that I needed were pretty much a laptop and some software uh, for example I couldn't design posters for my clients if I did not have Photoshop so that was a resource that I needed uh, that equipment was the was the MacBook Pro um, and I you know these were the resources I needed but if you're sort of scaling up to a, a bigger business you know you might need office space you might need computers for your software engineers uh, or if it's a new restaurant you know you're going to need a kitchen and all the equipment that goes with kitchens off ovens deep fat fryers uh, whatever it might be um, so uh, again organizational feasibility well you need the people uh, which is your management expertise you're not going to start a new restaurant uh, without a chef uh, unless you're going to be the chef yourself um, and you're not going to uh, start up a new restaurant if you do not have the uh, correct ovens or deep fat fryers and of course the same applies if it's a digital business or a mobile application you're not going to start up a new business if you do not know how to program a mobile app uh, you need someone to do that and of course you are not going to start up a new business mobile application business if you do not have the laptop or that to create it so that's just examples of organizational feasibility again depending on your idea and um, the the uh, management expertise and the resources will be different and um, we'll discuss them in class in a bit more detail okay finally uh, financial feasibility and uh, oh excuse me straight off <laughs> got excited uh, so financial feasibility is the same uh, 
we ask the same question is do we have the finances essentially to go ahead with this idea um, a preliminary fin financial assessment is usually sufficient at the startup stage so we don't go into heavy budgets at the start that's something that we develop in the business plan but we do need to uh, consider total startup cash needed how much do we need to start up and total startup cash needed is usually the cash needed to start up and prepare the business for its first sale so how much money do we need to get to that first sale and that tends to be the question that we ask here and can we get to that first sale uh, so I need money for a laptop, I need money for uh, Photoshop, the Adobe packages, I need money for internet access, I need, you know, you have to be realistic and go, right, these are all the things I need, how much does that cost? And uh, um, that's what we say is financial. So, you know, it's, it's all good and well for me going, you know, look, I have a great idea of setting up a restaurant in, in Ireland, uh, but I have to ask questions, well, do I have the cash to to um to start up a you know to buy the deep fat fryers to buy the ovens to buy the hot plates to buy the bain marie's uh to pay the staff and you know okay i may go at this stage right well this is exactly how much it's going to cost but realistically i can get a grant or a loan for these and if it's realistic that that can happen then you can say that the that it is feasible however if you look at it and go, uh, this is never going to happen, then obviously you don't go ahead with the the idea. Uh, we say here it is better to overestimate startup costs, uh, and it is, be I suppose, because you don't want to um, get caught. Uh, you can look at the financial performance of similar businesses to give you an idea of, of you know how much you need to get to that startup first sale, and of course if if it's uh, attractive again we will be looking at uh, finances and uh, business finances in about week 10 or 11 uh, of this uh, uh, entrepreneurship short uh, sorry, course um, but I think we can sort of leave it there for today in terms of we've looked at financial feasibility uh, organizational feasibility product and service feasibility and industry and target market feasibility and if we Oh, let's get out of here and go back to this slide. You know, if we uh, say here, oh dear, sorry. I need to learn how to use that better. <laughs> we can say here, idea, we've got our idea. If we can say yes to all of these areas, proceed with the business plan. If we say no in one or more area, then we have to drop or rethink the idea. And again, examples that we give, you know, we're well, if the product isn't desirable, what can we do to make it desirable? Um, if the industry's in decline, well, do we really want to be going into that industry unless we can uh, bring disruption or some sort of new innovative technological idea that's going to help reinvigorate it? Then we can. Uh, organizational, if we don't have the equipment or the people, uh, then we can't pursue. So we need to go back to start and either find someone new that can help us or we need to revisit our idea and the same with the last financial feasibility uh, if we have the money go ahead if we don't or if we don't think we can get it well back to square one uh, okay i think that's everything for today i hope that um makes sense to you all uh, we will go through it in more details we'll have a Q&A session on this in our class and uh, uh, if you don't feel free to email me at anthony.frill at polytechnic.ph hope you all have a good day thank you very much